That comes less than a day after the Fitch Ratings Agency, that's one of the big three, declared that America's credit outlook is now negative because of Washington's inability to fix this problem. And last night, New Jersey Governor Chris Christie took President Obama to task for his leadership on this issue. I believe that the Occupy movement and the Tea Party movement come, their genesis is from the same feeling, which is an anger that government can't get things done. And so, now, that is the last similarity between the Tea Party movement and the Occupy movement. But I believe that their, the cause for their anger comes from the same place. They look at Washington, D.C., and they look at a president who's a bystander in the Oval Office. And, you know, I, I was angry this weekend, listening to the spin coming out of the administration about the failure of the Super Committee, and that the president knew it was doomed for failure, so he didn't get involved. Well, then what the hell are we paying you for? It's doomed for failure, so I'm not getting involved? Well, what, what have you been doing exactly? I mean, I, I will tell you that I think that both parties deserve blame for what's going on in Washington, D.C. Both parties do. They're spending more time talking at each other than talking with each other. We all know what the solutions to these problems are. We've done them in New Jersey in many areas, but we don't have the political will to get them done. And in New Jersey, the reason why they got done is because I called people into the room and said, we're going to solve this problem. And I had people of goodwill on the other side who said they believed it was their obligation, regardless of party, to get done things like pension and benefit reform. That Mayor Red can tell you personally how much that's helping her and her budget situation in Camden. Why the President of the United States refuses to do this is, a, is astonishing to me. I mean, you know, if he wanted to run for Senate again and just be one of a hundred, I'm sure he could have gotten reelected over and over again in Illinois. When you're president, it's kind of what I was talking about before, you know, 41, 21, and one. Well, he's the one in Washington, and he's got to get something done here. And it's not good enough just to say, well, I'll get it done after the election. Chris Christie, 41, 21, and 1 is the, the, how you get something passed in New Jersey with the Assembly and the Senate, and he's the one, the governor, saying President Obama's the one in Washington. Where was the leadership? Christopher Hahn is a former aide to Senator Chuck Schumer, and Chris Plant is the host of the Chris Plant Show. Chris Hahn, also a Fox News contributor now. All right, guys, so welcome, uh, welcome back. Uh, let's talk about this, because Chris Christie comes out and really spares no, no words for President Obama. He's come out and endorsed Mitt Romney, so let's not fool ourselves that this is not a political yeah. hit. Uh, but Chris Plant, does he have a point? Is it fair to call President Obama a bystander in the Oval Office when President Obama did, Chris Plant, submit a plan to that super committee that would have caused $3 trillion in cuts, and it also included Medicare cuts as well as some tax increases? It was uh, nothing but a series of poison pills which was designed to be dead on arrival, and the president knew it. The president is not only a bystander here, there's really, there's not a fingerprint of his to be found on this whole process other than the phony political offering, uh, which, was, which was just that. It's, it's more nefarious than just leading from behind and being a bystander because he must have failure. It is the centerpiece of his campaign, and without failure from that committee, his campaign program falls completely apart. You know, the President of the United States, GQ magazine, not exactly a bastion of right-wing conspiracy, put together a list, which is just coming out now, of the 25 least influential people alive. And Barack Obama made the list. GQ magazine, least influential people alive. And Barack Obama, the President of the United States, is on the list. This is a perfect example why. He's not a doer. He's a watcher. He's running for re-election. He's not leading. He's voting present, uh, leading from wow. behind.